Hi everyone, today I'm going to be colouring this lovely little ship in a bottle from um, Johanna Bassford's Flourish. This is the page with all the little um, items on and uh, I've picked this one. Now what I'm going to do first with the ship is do a background behind the ship of a sort of sunset or sunrise, I'm not sure which. So I'm going to start with number 29 which is the, uh, the sort of mid-red colour and I'm going to put this at the bottom. Now I'm not going to follow the curve of the wave, I'm going to keep it flat. I think that looks a little bit more real. I'll say real, it doesn't really look real, but uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully it will work out. Now I'm going to put more, I don't know, is that level with that? Yeah, I can go up quite high with this side as well. And try and keep the um, blend lines where I move to a new colour fairly even across because once we get to the top they need to match so I'm just gently sort of thinking there's a little bit in here a little bit up there I'm keeping it really light on this bit because I want to blend in my next cover but I'm going to try and push a little bit harder down here and get a little bit darker and just sort of gently fade that out by just doing a tiny bit of pressure on the page there we go then I'm just going to move through the box of pencils so it's nice and easy. So to number two, which is the sort of darkest orangey red, I suppose. I'm going to go back over what I did. I think if you would layer it over a few times, it just makes the colour more saturated and helps with it blending into the next layer. And here you can see I'm going to go fainter. So here I'm going over a few times. Can you see I'm I'm applying the pencil over and over to make sure I get quite a lot of colour. Then as I go up, go up here I'm doing less layers. I'm also pressing lighter. I try not to press too hard anyway um, just because I know that I've been colouring for a long time so I tend to put quite a lot of pressure down on the pencil without realising it just because I don't get cramp in my hand or anything anymore like I used to so it's easier so I try hard to keep it a bit lighter so that I don't it's okay when I'm using this paper it's card but when I'm in a book if I press too hard I can um, indent the page on the back which is really quite nasty this is number 24 although Johanna's books are always really good quality paper occasionally if you haven't got the right thing underneath or um, you're too near to the spine or something like that it can just indent just a little bit and then when you're trying to do the back you've got this nasty mark so and also I learned this early on when I was first started colouring Johanna's books the paper wasn't such a good quality paper she was using what her publishers chose but now she um, chooses her own paper it's just so beautiful and it's ideal for using um, all sorts of pencils and pens but um, these Stedler Ergosofts that I'm using um, are ones that she tends to like and recommend so I think she probably tries these out on her paper. So we're just moving along through the tin still. So this is number four and again this time I'm not going to go right down to here. I'm going to sort of take it from about here. I'm looking at uh, and thinking where can I see paper showing through and I wanted to sort of go over the top of that. So you sort of play it by ear. I'm sorry about that knocking noise. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm not really sure what it is, but it's not me. Um, so uh, I sort of, you know, think about how far down I'm going to go depending on uh, on what it looks like as I go. I haven't always got a fixed plan or method. You know, I might end up deciding I'll go right down here even though I said I wasn't going. So the next colour we're going to go for is the number 42. Now you can, if you've looked at any of my previous um, videos, you'll see, you might recognise that this is exactly the same way as I did the scarecrow background in a miniature secret garden. Um, so I'm afraid it might be a bit of repetition for you if you did that one or watched that video. But uh, it is a fun one to do. I find it it's quite effective I like it anyway hopefully you do too so I'm going right to the top you can see here but I'm going to go in with a yellow at the end and just blend it all together 
so here I'm just you see I'm sort of going back and forth and all around I'm just trying to fill in any gaps if there's any gaps around the sails or anything um, I'll fill them in and the yellow that I'm going to use is the number 11 and I'm going to use this all over the whole thing to try and bring it all together brighten it up and blend it all and while I'm doing this I'm thinking about what colours I'm going to do the rest now the clouds I think I'm not going to do too much with it. I don't want them too dark. I'm going to take the light grey, I think, and just do a little bit of a layer on them. But I'm thinking the harder decision is what to do with the um, sails and the flags on the ship. They need to obviously stand out from the background. There we go, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to grab my light grey, as I said, which is number 80, and I'm just going to do the bottom of the clouds and I'm going to start off a bit darker so do a few more layers at the bottom and then work up and just sort of blend that grey out so there's some white left behind I don't want it to look like it's a big stormy cloud you could do a stormy scene very dark but I find Johanna's pictures are so happy and cheery they don't really lend themselves to dark and colours. Okay so I'm going to skip out the boat and I'm going to move on to the sea for now and uh, while I'm doing that I shall think about the boat and I'm going to use this number 35 and start with this top wave. Now so look at the waves that they are they are they go down here and up here so I'm thinking where it goes down here I'm going to do it darker so I'm pressing quite hard and then I'm going to lighten up as it comes up because I think the light would be catching the top and even if it doesn't quite if it wouldn't quite work like that in nature I think it just adds some interest so I'm going to leave it the lightest here on the top and then just blend that colour up so I'm going to go down here and do my darkest bit and then do less layers of colour as I come up here now if you do this and you feel that you've pressed too hard in one area or another, just rub it out. Um, these pencils are quite good for erasing. So you can just um, you know, erase a little bit. Or you can try going over the top in a bit of white. Um, it doesn't always, not all white pencils are very good for this. But it depends on the brand. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to miss out that line and then do this one and I'm going to swap my colours around a little bit just to give you an idea of something that you could try so this is going to be my next wave so that one dark and then lighten up towards the top and then darker again down here now you notice that you may notice that I often turn my pencil around that's a habit that I've got into and I don't know if other people just do it automatically as well or if it's just me but when my pencil starts to feel like it's a bit blunt I just turn it round and find a sharper little bit and I find when I did some speeding up videos I really noticed that I was doing it all the time and it looked a little bit odd but anyway so this one I think I'm going to do darker down here and lighter up there there isn't a lot to do there and then it's this one so this is the light part so a little bit we don't want it as dark as here and then up there a bit darker down there just so there's a bit of a difference in color now I'm going to use a different blue for the other line I've picked up this number three I thought I'd go for one that looks quite different but I'm going to follow the same pattern with regards to light and dark so I'm going to start I find it easier to start with the dark you may not if you do it the way you want so darker there and then less colour so go up here now you see how that isn't nicely unblended so I'm going to go back in and just gently pull some colour up until I feel like it's blended in there we go and then down here and I've got a lot of colour down here in this little bottom part and then less as we go to this top bit and again you can see this isn't very nicely blended so we can go back in and the idea is 
Just keep adding layers until you're happy with how it looks. It can be tempting to be impatient and just do a little bit and move on. And if you're just colouring for relaxation and pleasure and you're happy with that, absolutely do it. And some people I know get bored, they want to quickly move on. So don't spend lots of time on it. But if you want to get, you know, more of a an intense colour with a pencil, you do have to really layer it up. But of course some people choose to use a pen and uh, using pens is a way to get a very quick amount of colour down. But I've never been keen, I because I started off with pencil, I've never really got into using a pen. We've got to get to the boat now, I've been procrastinating but off we go. Number 77, I should say ship, not boat, and I'm going to do the bottom wood bit first. Um, but. I've started getting more into pens a little bit and they can be really great if you want to do a background quickly. Um, I've sometimes used a pen um, and then gone over it in something else. Um, I've used a red Posca pen for a very um, quick background. I was doing a sort of tablecloth type effect. And then on top, because with Posca as a paint pen you can colour on top, so I took a pencil and on top of it I did some shading. See, one thing I find tricky about pens is shading. Some people are brilliant at it and I'm not. Uh, it's just not something that I've learned how to do. So you can see that what I've done is I've made it darker on the edges and a bit light in the middle just to make it look like there's some light there. It just makes it a little bit more interesting, I think. But to give more of a wood effect, I'm going to take my black, which I've noticed is blunt. I was just going to sharpen it. And I'm going to do a few little stripes on the wood. Hang on a minute, my sharpener will be making a noise. Right, that's a bit better, isn't it? So that's number nine. Because I want to do very fine lines, I need it really sharp. I'm just going to do tiny little dashes of lines across it to make it look a bit more like it's wood. They hardly show. There we go. Now we need to do the cork as well, thinking about the wood. And I'm going to do it in this number 73. Now this bit's inside the bottle and this bit's outside the bottle. So I'm thinking, would they look different? And also, would we see a bit in here? So I'm going to colour a bit of cork here as if we're looking through the bottom we can see it. Oops, there. And this bit in as well. But I want this bit to be darker because it's outside of the bottle so I'm going to put another layer of colour on it compared to those bits and I hope that looks, it's actually looking a bit orangey for my liking. So I'm going to go over in number 76 and just darken it up a bit. I'm just going to do a layer all over because I think it's looking like it's orange and I want it to look like it's brown. It might be a bit dark now, but there we go. That's what I'm going to do for the cork. Now we've got to deal with these sails. Now sails of boats are normally white. We could leave them white, but I'm thinking I might just add a little bit of shading on them to make them, because they're not straight. You see how they're they're either bent in or outwards here, here and here. So I've picked up this pencil, which is number 43, and I'm thinking, I haven't used any of this in the sun, sun um, set last rise, but I'm thinking maybe they would be catching the sun in certain areas. So I'm thinking this one looks like it's bent outwards, so this top bit here might, this bit under here might be more shadowed and this might be catching the sun. So I'm thinking, I'm going to do a little bit on the top. I'm just guessing here, I really don't quite know what I'm doing. And a little bit on the top of that one and that one. I think I'm going to do them all in a similar way. Now maybe we'll do a bit of shadow on the bottom in a light grey colour. So I kind of doesn't want to come out of the tin. The uh, number 80. Okay. And we'll do a little bit of grey just at the bottom of each of them. There we 
we go. And then we need to do the um, flags. Now, I always like the idea of doing them red, but as we've got red in our sunset, I think we'll just grab a blue and we'll do number 33. You can do any colour you want, and I'm just going to do these in a dark um, layer without any shading because it's quite a small space. Also, they'll be silhouetted against that sunset slash rise. There we go. And last little tiny touch that I'm just going to add. This is something I saw in a Chris Cheng video, number 20. She adds a little bit of pink to her clouds. And I'm going to add the faintest bit just to the top of the cloud here. And you may not even see it, but I just think it just lifts the clouds just slightly. There we go. But you have to have a very delicate touch. So now we haven't done the glass here. I decided to leave that. Now what you could do with this is get some white pen that we will. We use the um, my lovely Secura Secura jelly roll, and we're going to do some effects. And we've got some dots down here, which Johanna's put in for us, which I think are supposed to be like the sea spray. So we're going to put cover those over in white, and then we could add lots more to the water, and we could also add some shine to the bottle. I'm not going to add like do a strip down here or across here to make it look give us the impression that it's more inside a bottle and reflecting the light but I think I'm not I'm just gonna add some more at the top of the water level here and here as we go up by the boat because it would be sort of foaming and splashing and I'm just dotting it around hopefully you can see what I'm doing dotting it around the surface of the boat and I'm sort of covering that black line. And I'm going to do the same along here so that it's sort of splashing around all the way along here. There you go, it could add more to the other layers. I'm thinking maybe these top bits might have more than those but I'm actually going to leave that there. I think if I add any more I might be spoiling it. And also that top layer highlights the sort of boat and the difference between the water and the sun. So there we go. I think that's done. So I hope you enjoyed that and that you might have a go at it. Thank you very much for watching and happy colouring.